Hello and welcome. India has an electronics dependency, including the kind of equipment I'm staring at right now. How do we fix this problem in a way that it does not affect our current account deficit and also find solutions for our uh, vast engineering uh, talent and skills and so on and so forth? So I'm joined by an interesting person to talk about it, Vijay Ratnaparke, Managing Director of Robert Bosch uh, Engineering and Business Solutions. Vijay, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. So we have a dependency and, uh, you know, mobile phones, electronics, the works, and, the, and you were telling me that this could become a 400 billion billion dollar import bill by 2020. That's or serious. Or maybe beyond 2020, yes, yeah. I mean, depending uh, on how yeah. it develops. And but that's it's really a, frightening. It's a very, yeah, very frightening because it's the next next to or maybe it's beyond oil, yeah. right, what yeah. India needs. And then yeah. we won't have sufficient dollars yeah. to buy oil on one hand and yeah. to buy electronics on the other hand. So uh, we need to fix it. Right. And government is really taking good steps to right. fixing it. So my view on uh, this topic is we have the skills. In mm. fact, many times I feel when people talk of Gen Y, they mm. talk of people from India mm. because most of us are on the typical Gen Y characteristics, yeah. say Facebooks or LinkedIn mm. or Twitters and so on. Right? They are in Bangalore, they are in Pune, they are in Chennai and mm. uh, the cities of India. And this gizmo savvy Gen Y, so to speak, of India is really deep technical experts in this current field mm -hmm. of uh, what we are talking about, the ESDM sector itself. Mm -hmm. Especially the, the embedded design systems design and manufacturing. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. the embedded systems design. Uh, mm -hmm. The good news for us, for India, is that it has a lot more software than hardware. So hardware is getting commoditized as mm -hmm. we speak in this ESDM sector itself. Mm -hmm. So manufacturability becomes mm -hmm. easier mm -hmm. of this electronic because it gets standardized. Mm -hmm and software becomes sophisticated. Mm. And this is a good news because as a uh, vendor or as a, as a OEM of this product, I would like to hide my uh, IP into the software mm. because the hardware can be really looked at mm. and you can know what is happening in the hardware. Mm. Unless it's an ASIC, I don't want to get into the technical part. Mm. But basically the software is where the beauty can be, software is where the sophistication can be. Mm. And if this is the game getting played, then the software becomes more complex, which mm -hmm. is good news for India because we have software engineers. Mm. And uh, we have all those, as I said, the gizmo savvy Gen Ys who are, uh, so to speak, able to deliver this uh, required uh, mm -hmm. software or the required solution for the ESDM sector. So we have the companies which are actually making these products mm -hmm. in India. We have their global in-house centers in India. We have their engineers in India. If we leverage this ecosystem, we can produce the set of ESDM solutions that are required for the Indian consumers in India itself. Right. So and if that starts happening, yeah. then the bill can really okay. come down. So <laughs> let's look at the demand yeah. and the supply, right? Yeah. So the supply yeah. you spoke of, which you're saying there are a lot of young people out there who are capable, who Absolutely. have the aptitude to do this. Yes. Now, the specific question there being, but it also requires specialized skills, right? Now, the way companies or industries like you hire, you're actually hiring a fraction of what is available out there. Yes. No, I, uh, yes and no. So. I uh, typically you don't get somebody now if, let's say I'm from automotive industry mm. I don't find a automotive engine expert from a college mm. I don't find somebody who can do torque monitoring equations for our uh, engine mm. torque mm. right so we have to make them mm. so as an industry when we get together we in fact we are trying to solve this problem as NASCOM mm. one of the problems always and this has been mm. years and we always progress a little bit more every year on the uh, talent mm and how this talent can get into deep domain expertise. Mm. So the so the game is on depth of domain than uh, volume, right. than the scale. Mm -hmm. So it's a scale game versus the depth game. And mm. typically in the Indian IT industry, which is if you leave out engineering, it mm. has been a scale equation. Yeah. So we have 20,000 Java guys or mm. 30,000 SAP guys or I mean, whatever the numbers there are. Essentially moving from there to saying I have 100 torque monitoring experts mm. who can uh, you know tune your engine mm. uh, or uh, things like that. So we are moving only a little bit. Mm. So we need to get them ready for that game okay. and this is possible. Right. So the learnability definitely is high and mm. the talent is available. Mm. We need to groom them into the separate, I mean different right. fields. Automotive so is just one field. Right. right. So let's look at the demand side now. Two yeah. components. One yeah. is policy which we'll yeah. come to and yeah. the other is let's say the entrepreneurship or the or the or the enterprises which will actually suck all this talent or create right. these opportunities. What is the status there in terms of new businesses or new investments taking place? In fact, this is something that is uh, that will get fueled by the policies of government. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we kept aside, I mean, this is what okay. makes it interesting is, see, today uh, the challenges are multifold. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if I'm a tier one uh, of a, uh, say, white goods uh, mm -hmm. electronic manufacturer, my challenge would be the import landed cost of China, mm -hmm. uh, Chinese goods, mm -hmm. could be lower than my uh, bill of material cost. Mm -hmm. There's a situation, how do I fight? Uh, unless I have the whole market here, mm. 
if we are calling in the engineering uh, services forum, we call it the ecosystem landscape mapping. Mm -hmm. That is, where is OEM, where is a tier one, where is a tier two? What are the labs available for testing? What are the accreditations required? And how do we bring the product into the market? So we are trying to map this whole ecosystem for a given vertical. Mm -hmm. So that the vertical is, then we can certify saying this vertical is, let's say aerospace is mm. able to produce a plane, mm. a 14 seater plane in India. Mm. Is that capability existing in India? So we are looking at where are the gaps in the ecosystem mm. on one hand. Uh, so this would kind of give a list of mm. things uh, could that do. could happen. But yeah. someone has to finally come in, right? I mean, you need uh, entrepreneurs or businesses to say, okay, here is where we take a big bet on the Indian engineering manufacturing space, yes. at least a new bet. Yes. So where are and they? And uh, yeah, okay, this <laughs> <laughs> this is a tougher question. I mean, that is yeah. where are the entrepreneurs? There are things happening. You must. Or have businesses, heard of it could be expansion the, as well. Yeah. Yeah, you must have heard of. Uh, okay, there's one 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 good news I will talk about, and then I will come to the policies or who is mm. investing. The good news is whole world is looking at Asia as the market. Mm -hmm. If you go to Germany, if you go to US and Japan, if you are a Japanese guy or an American mm. guy or a German guy, today you are saying my growth market, mm. they were saying emerging market all this while. I heard a Japanese client of mine saying we call these grow growth markets. They are no more emerging markets. These are the only markets we have rather. <laughs> <laughs> but they are the only ones expanding, yeah. which is India, China, ASEAN mm. and so on, right? Mm. So the market is here and the people are here. Mm -hmm. So now it's a good combination of having your in-house centers, which mm. we called captive centers mm. earlier, and the possibility of having markets itself here. Mm. In automotive industry, it's seen. Mm. Everybody you name has a, a shop in Bangalore, Pune, mm. Chennai. Right. And we are uh, doing engineering maybe first, and then we are starting to use now uh, market as the second. Mm. Somebody started with a market entry first, mm. and started to have the in-house engineering centers second. So mm. th depending on where you went, right. this is happening anyway. Mm. But some of the news items which are coming for recently is the fab getting set up in India. Mm. See, if you look at pure electronics, mm. then the challenge that I said uh, is that ties into still infrastructure existing. and yeah, so yeah, many it's other still things. existing as a challenge because you need power, you need uh, sustained, uh, uh, you know, uh, investment coming in into the sector, and mm. you need uh, captive yeah. Uh, supply chain. Yeah, captive markets also, so mm. that uh, that can. But the good news, I mean, there are news is coming. The two fabs that are approved now, mm. where government has so said this morning, mm. government is signing a billion dollar check mm. on a fab. Mm. So first time ever, India will have a fab. Mm. Is it too late? Mm. It's a different question. At least we have it mm. after some time. So yeah. So fab in this case for yeah. someone who's watching is really the ability to manufacture semiconductors. Semiconductors. Yeah. That's okay. the basic of. Yeah what you are doing for the ESDM. And that's right. where the biggest value add happens if I'm producing anything of the, uh, you know, the anything which has a microcontroller right. and some components so which make the PCB. You know. Right, so last question. So yeah. one interesting thing that Robert Bosch is doing in, in your vertical, yeah. uh, which you could share with us, uh, which has some kind of impact on uh, India and uh, the opportunities. I, I mean, there are many exciting things, right? When it comes to engineering, I, I love the magic of engineering, mm. so to speak. So I can talk about, let's say, augmented reality. I mean, mm. just for the mm. sake of excitement, there are many fields like this. Mm. So augmented reality is like, if we two are sitting here and uh, we are able to visualize actually our interview being shown right now here on the on the television so mm. this is augmented to the reality so mm. the reality is only we two are here mm. and i can augment this with something Correct. else yeah. now the uh, solutions can be for instance you are driving a car mm. on your windshield mm. you are seeing as you drive uh, bosch is on the left side forum mall is on the right side and bangalore hosur road mm. it actually points the names there mm. so you are seeing the picture as you see today in the mm. car but there's an arrow says here is forum mall there's mm. an arrow says here is bosch mm or here is electronic city further ahead mm. and something like that. So all this and is, I think this beautiful. is already here. This, the technology exists. Yeah. So the, we are looking at how we can leverage this for education. Mm -hmm. Augmented reality has uh, huge possibilities. How can we leverage this for, let's say the uh, first time users of an equipment mm. uh, kind of learning. Or you got to imagine another situation. You have a modern car going into a garage, mm. roadside garage. And this was the mechanic who did not do anything on electronics. Mm. In few years from now, every car in India will have electronics. And the persons who were used to doing mechanical, uh, mm. you know, equipment man uh, management only, mm. now electronic becomes difficult for them. So if I had kind of goggles which I wear, mm. the moment the car comes into my garage, if I wear the goggles, it automatically starts showing me which are the defective parts. Okay. <laughs> and this is very easily possible. Mm. So 
there is I can get into little technical, but mm. it <laughs> starts getting difficult. So there is something called onboard diagnostics of mm. the car, mm, sure, which is yeah. electronics. Mm. From there, I can connect to the cloud mm. and get the uh, symbols of the diagnostic. Will tell me from the cloud that that symbol means this is wrong with the car. Mm. And then I show to the guy who is wearing goggles from the cloud mm. that exactly that part you need to change mm. and even how to change it. Mm. Right. So this possibility, there are enormous possibilities with just one change which is augmented reality. Right. And, there are and, many, and, many and many I think the, and the bottom line is that a lot of this could actually be or is being developed in India. Oh yeah, a whole Absolutely. lot of yeah. stuff is done in yeah. India. Yes. Yeah. yes, That's a great note to end on. Thank you so much Thank for speaking you. with us Vijay. Thanks a lot. Okay.